Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video, in honor of the 51st anniversary of the Apollo 11 lunar landing, the audio of which I was listening to during the live stream in which I was doing this, I decided that I would try to land the shuttle on the moon. Uh, this is not a landing and return yet. That I, I was thinking about doing that, but first just landing the shuttle on the moon. Let's pretend that we're going to build the museum on the moon, like the Smithsonian, and we're gonna keep the shuttle there, okay? So that's the first step, and that's what I was going for. Uh, though technically in the cargo bay of the shuttle, I put enough fuel for the shuttle to return back, there were problems. So in the shuttle bay, we have kerosene and oxygen that are feeding. that's feeding uh, two Merlin vacuum engines on the tail next to the SSMEs. I kept the shuttle configuration the same except of course we've got landing legs on the tail and at the bottom of the external tank we have BE3Us being fed by hydrogen and oxygen and those will get us into orbit around the moon. Of course we're gonna have to keep the external tank with us because of the position of the BE3Us but I couldn't put that stuff on the shuttle's tail and anyway we'll just leave it be like that. Now Instead of trying to create the smallest possible launcher for this, I decided to just use my monument launcher. It's just simpler that way. So we're not, uh, in my previous uh, shuttle to the moon videos, which I'm, I'm still doing, you know, trying to get the shuttle to Mir, I've been trying to make the smallest possible launcher that can get it done while still keeping the shuttle stack the same. That's not the goal here. This is just land the shuttle on the moon. And so I've got the monument launcher without any boosters. You can hear the Apollo 11 audio going in the background there as we launch. I couldn't quite uh, separate that out. That audio is from Apollo11inrealtime.org. So we've got some of that. The monument launcher without any boosters. And here we have first stage separation. And the ignition takes a little bit of time. For a reminder, the first stage has the equivalent of 41 M1 engines. The second stage, 13 M1 engines. And it actually doesn't quite get us into orbit. You can see the periapsis is less than 140 kilometers. And that's mainly because I couldn't dump the fairings early. You can see how awkwardly the fairings go off. And when I was sizing the fairings, I found out that procedural fairings has a 50 meter limit. Because <laughs> uh, I was wrapping them all around. I thought there must be higher than that because then we have larger fairings around the Saturn V. Must have been. So I don't know why it was hitting a 50 meter limit suddenly. Maybe it was the wrong fairings. Anyway, here we go using the SSMEs and they're on, they only have one ignition in order to transfer to the moon. So we're using the external tank fuel for the lunar transfer and using the SSMEs on a single ignition. There they've shut down, but I found out due to inaccuracies in the burn, we overshot. I tried to use the BE3Us uh, from Blue Origin to bring that orbit back down. But you can see we're deviating away from retrograde there because the BE3Us are not balanced and that's the problem. That's basically why we will not be landing on the moon and getting back into orbit this time because the balance issues were all over the place. Anyway, we managed to make the TLI burn after some struggling and wiggling about. And here we are rolling, let's call it a barbecue roll. It wasn't meant that way, but here it is. And of course we do want to keep the hydrogen and oxygen. I put MLI layers on. But little did I know that the MLI layer configura uh, calculation has some weirdness when it comes to the external tank and um, the tanks of the monument rocket. Tanks that have a set mass, the calculation for the MLI layer seems to get messed up. And in the case of the external tank, if you put too many MLI layers on, it suddenly goes from being its normal 26-ish tons dry uh, to being like seven tons and so that's weird. Anyway, in order to keep it balanced because the BE3Us were not balanced, I decided I had to use the Merlin vacuums. That's another thing that uh, prevents us from ultimately taking off again because the Merlin vacuums and the BE3Us both have limited ignitions. They both have five and so if we use one ignition early then we are going to have problems reigniting it again. Here I'm just topping off the fuel cell fuel. And there's a first shutdown. 
and you'll note that our periapsis is negative. That's because I decided to go straight for a landing instead of first getting into orbit uh, in, because of the ignition issue. So yeah, we dumped the external tank and the BE-3Us and now it's just the Merlin vacuum engines that are going to land the shuttle. And they are sufficient to Merlin vacuum engines. It's similar to the alternate Starship lander design. And actually, the of course, landing the shuttle is actually easier than landing Starship. Uh, let, let's not talk about that because I want to make the seam as difficult as possible, but actually it's easier than landing Starship. But anyway, especially because I've got the landing legs laid out like that. There is still the ignition issue and the throttling issue. The Merlin vacuums don't uh, throttle deeply. They throttle a bit, but not deeply enough for landing on the moon very well. And you can see I'm throttling down there, but the suicide burn countdown is not counting down, which means that we have too much throttle. So eventually I have to shut down and consume an extra ignition, and that ultimately, I think, is going to lead us to use our final ignition. I think there must have been a cor another correction burn with the Merlin vacuums earlier. So yeah, we have to shut down, let the suicide burn countdown complete. And but here we are drifting down. At least the shuttle's RCS is powerful. Yep. And oh, I double clutched that ignition. That's another thing. Ah, oh, that hurt. And there we go. Are we down? Oh, I, mean, I might have. I think I shut it down a little bit too early, and then we bounced, and then we tipped over very very slowly because this is lunar gravity and flop <laughs> I'm sure some tiles would have broken there but it was a very slow topple I mean like two meters per second so we ended up with like the most expensive lunar rover uh, you'll note the extra Delta V that we have available I thought about reigniting the Merlin vacuums but we were out of ignitions so that was not going to happen. I was trying to turn upslope and sell the fuel down in the Merlin vacuums, but then I, when I throttled up, I found out I didn't have any more ignitions, so I couldn't try to get it up again. It wouldn't have been able to get all the way to orbit with the fuel it had, but I just wanted to try it out. Anyway, time to make some changes. Uh, first of all, I added a different control points, and I also tried to tilt the BE-3Us differently. Turns out that I ended up doing it worse somehow which was sad uh, so that's a spoiler and it's gonna end up worse than last time but I also added to uh, an extra set of boosters for the for the monument rocket so now we have four of those boosters amounting to 16 RD 270 engines prior to this I had attempted a different launch without those extra boosters and that didn't work out very well at all. But I think that was due to the weird MLI layer calculations. I ultimately ditched the MLI layers on the monument rocket and that helped as well. So I tried separating off the fairings here because they are heavy after all. So in between the stages, separating off the fairings to save some mass in the hope that the upper stage will actually get us into orbit properly this time with the additional help of the boosters, of course. This also allows us to see the shuttle stack on top of the second stage before getting to orbit, so we have this nice view of the shuttle stack without the SRVs, of course, cruising on top of the monument second stage, which is 24 meters in diameter, by the way. And there's orbit. Okay, so certainly ditching the fairings and having extra boosters helped. And now, translunar injection again with the SSMEs. That at least worked. That's nice and balanced. No issues with the SSMEs. Though, in this case, I was controlling from that controller on the external tank that I had placed. So, a little bit more efficient, so I don't overburn. And we hit it right on the mark there, if you will. And a little bit of RCS to fine tune it, of course. And off we go to the moon. So, at this point, I was feeling pretty good about the situation. But then we got to the moon, 
And of course, I've already told you that the VE3Us are not in a good place, it turns out. I, I drained the fuel in the external tank in the VAB. I tried to see where the center of uh, thrust would be through the center of lift and everything. And somehow I got it wrong. I don't know. Now, I hear it's actually looking pretty good, but then after it turns to retrograde, it starts wandering off. I think it's when I hit the surface negative button sort of mess it up. I do have a controller on top of the tank in the shell's cargo bay that is meant to be where it's controlling from. So uh, I go to surface negative. I don't know. Something went wrong here, that's for sure. Did I fail to hit the execute button maybe? I wonder. I wonder if that was the problem or not. But anyway, obviously a bit of a problem here. So I decided that we should use the Merlin vacuums as well. So I activated those because that helped last time. We are now just on SAS. And even with the thrall down, this is worse actually. So SAS is, uh, is trying. It's using the yaw and pitch and everything, but the combination is very bad. So we have a lot of spinning around when trying to get into orbit and I couldn't do it in one burn because it just spun too much. So we did one capture burn and came around and did another burn. So this is manifestly much worse than last time. Here's the additional burn and you can see it's nowhere near retrograde because it's just really hard to control it. So if we can nail the balance right in a subsequent attempt, we may be able to do things a little bit better. But here I go, I'm going direct for landing here and separating off the external tank much faster. We're on a wicked trajectory. You can see we're at 413, 414 kilometers. And ultimately, we shut down the Merlin vacuums and then drift down and then start going like this straight down to our landing points, which in a way might be good so that we don't have so much horizontal velocity and we are less likely to tip over. So here's the final phase of descent. And it was so dark I couldn't see the ground. I didn't really pick the best landing spot. And what's going on? It seems like a lot more horizontal velocity this time than last time to be honest. I think we bounced up, up with the landing struts and then went back down again. We sort of did a minor litho break and wobbled quite a lot, but here I think the RCS helped. Also, maybe the suspension is on the legs, I don't know. Uh, we settled down and it actually stayed upright. So that's a thing. I landed the shuttle on the moon. I mean, it's sort of a goofy thing to do, but in honor of Apollo 11, I guess, sort of, in a weird way. Anyway, there it is. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.